Hey everyone, welcome to another Common UI tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be showcasing how you can set up the Common UI input data. Now, if you've seen my Common UI full guide, then you'll be very familiar with a lot of this. This is more of like a shortened down version, as well as a bunch of other type of examples of how to set up a UI and how to get them to work with the Common UI input data, as well as showcasing icons to appear as well. So just a variety of different things that are available and you'll be able to have that demonstrated and as well as how to build them. So with that, this is going to be a very similar video to my enhanced input action video that I have released recently uh, at the time of this video as well. So they're gonna have the same type of demo. However, they're gonna be utilizing two different aspects of Common UI, which can showcase uh, input actions. We have the input actions data, and then we have the enhanced input actions. There are two different things. The enhanced input action is experimental, which is very buggy, and it has a few quirks to it. So it's not fully trusted to be an active project, while this is fully functional and it is trusted to be working. So either one, you can go for it. At the time of this video, I'm using 5.4. Who knows, maybe later on, it will be a bit more safe. So. Yep, I want to give a special shout out to Arthur, who has joined my membership on YouTube. Um, he's the first one, and I'm recording all of like three videos at the same time, so he gets a shout out on all three because um, uh, go Arthur. So let's get into it. And this project is using the Common UI plugin. You do need to have this turned on in order to follow along with this video. Once you have turned that on, make sure to hit that restart, pause the video, and give yourself a second to get that pulled up. And we're gonna move on now. So from here, I wanna showcase what I've already created. Now, there's just a few things to help speed along the process, but in no way is complicated stuff. So with this, I have set up a game mode base, and all I did with it is enter a default pawn class, and that's just my de demo player. It's the only thing I did to that. And then within my demo player, all I did was create these, I guess, five nodes. I have the construct. Once we actually create a UI, we're going to then select the class. We add it to the viewport, so that just adds it to our screen. We hit show mouse cursor that comes from the player controller, just so that we see the cursor. And then we also set the input mode to UI only. Uh, we don't really have any game aspects, but anyways, I just set that anyways, just in case. So that's all I have set up there. Uh, we do have the default input actions, but we're not going to be using that, but they are there in case you saw that folder and was questioning. Next, we have the controller data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up to kind of explain what it is. I'm not going to go through the manual process of creating it right now. However, what this is, is a list of all of the buttons that you have available. So you would hit this plus button. And what you would do is down here, you would then click on any type of key. So for example, Q. And then under key brush, you need to then match it with uh, any type of image that you have. I don't have a Q key here, uh, but I, if I did have one, that's where I would enter. So to give a bit more explanation on why you're entering these in is this sets the button and the image for the button for your type of input. So in this case, this is for my keyboard. So every key that I have, I wanna match with an image. So this allows our system to know whenever this button is pressed, this is the image that correlates with that button. And the same thing would apply to my controller data. So this is for my gamepad, where I have the gamepad button, and then I also have an image to match. Now, of course, you'll notice that these are PlayStation buttons. If you have Xbox, you can also set up Xbox. You can set up as many controller uh, gamepad options and you can link those images for each. This video is not gonna cover how to support all different types of game pads, but just that you do have the option to set up different type of controller data for different controllers. And in order to create this widget, you would go into the blueprint class, and by widget, I mean blueprint. Um, I should not have said widget there. And you would then search for controller data and you would make a blueprint class called common input base controller data. And you'd open up from here. And then after you open up here, oop, I hate when it opens up the graph like that. You then get to specify if it's mouse keyboard, 
gamepad, touch, or count. So if you did gamepad, and for example, uh, by default is just generic, and then platform name you'd want to specify as Windows, and then display name would also be generic for uh, a generic gamepad. There's different situations going on when it is using Xbox and PlayStation, but because that's not exactly an easy thing to set up, I'm not covering that in this video. But that is how you can go through, and then you would just set up all of the images and keys as such. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that. And then I also have my images set up. So we're gonna be using these four images in this uh, video. These four images are in fact AI generated. I am only using them for demonstration purposes. I will not be providing them, selling them of any sorts or manner. This is for demonstrations only and just providing you that disclaimer. I have also created some styles. So I'm not going over styles in this video. You can watch my full common UI guide for that. But all I did was set a text base where I set the text the font of 40, and then I sent the color to black. Now, if you are looking for font and you're not seeing it available, if you want the default Unreal Engine one, go into your content drawer, hit settings, and then show engine content. And that will allow you to see those fonts available. Now, I don't wanna see that engine folder down there, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide it, but that is how you can show it there. And then I also have a button style. So this is the colors that our button's gonna be using. It's just using very, very basic colors, such as this. I'm just entering into them so that if you wanted to, in fact, copy exactly what I'm doing, you can look at the colors and enter them as such. And I do the same thing with the selected, hovered, and pressed. Although we're not covering them in this video, they are just entered anyways as well as to set the text style as the textile base that I have created. And I have a couple borders that I've created, so I'm just gonna open up all of them. They're all very, very simple. It's just a tint of different colors that I have available that we'll be using in example widgets that we create. Right, so that is everything that I have prepped beforehand. So now let's go ahead and set up the input data. And before we move on to that, let's actually go into our project settings. And with here, there's a couple things that we need to edit as well as some things that will help us along the way. So we're gonna go into our common input settings. Now, one thing is that we need to add the controller data. So if you've already created yours, go ahead and add them here. If not, go ahead and add them now and then come back here and follow the video. <clears throat> and from here, the next thing we're gonna need to do is we need an input data. And as of right now, we're not gonna have anything to enter in it yet, but we want to go ahead and make one first. So we want the common UI input data, and then we could just type in input data. You can name it whatever you want. As of right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. And then we're gonna also enter that here so that we just have it set and available. And then by the default, I actually want gamepad to be first. That way uh, the gamepad icons just always appear and it fixes some issues with keyboard showing, uh, not showing first until you move. So we're gonna then change this to generic. This should be the gamepad's name, which by default, it should be generic and you should use that unless you have uh, created anything along the lines that supports like PlayStation or Xbox. All right, from here, we also need to adjust our viewport. We're gonna change this to common game viewport client. We're also gonna go all the way down here and we're gonna go into the common UI editor. We're gonna enter in those styles that I created. And if you have created any, enter them here as well. And then we are also going to scroll back up and go into the widget designer. From here, there's a couple things I want to add. 
and that is to add in the widget template selector. What this does is that when creating a widget, it actually allows you to select what the first widget is going to be added in. So you can just have like by default a canvas panel showing up or by default other things showing up. So I'm going to also switch this grid panel over to a, let's see, an overlay. And then I'm going to remove this vertical box because we're not going to use it. And I'll move this up like so in that order. And then from favorite widget parent classes, instead of the user widget, we're going to use the common user widget. And then from here, instead of just one option, we're going to use two and we're going to have the common activatable widget. And that way, when we create widgets, we can select which one we want to use. And then now we're going to restart our editor. Now that we have restarted the editor, we now need to create our input action data table. This is a data table to hold all the default input actions, as well as just the input actions that our UI will be using. Now you can have multiple data tables that each have their own type of inputs. For example, you could have like ability one, ability two, three, four, five, and that could be its own data table. And then you can have another data table that is specifically like this one opens up this menu or this one opens up uh, the settings menu, things like that. You can have more than one. So I just want to specify on that. So with this, we're going to then type in input and we're going to create a common UI input action data table. We're going to do DT and then input action. When opening this up, if we hit this add button, we then are prompted to enter all of this information. Now, all of this information shown here is essentially we want to name what the input is going to be, and then you can set if it has a priority, and then you can also set a default input key. So this is by default what the key should be. And for keyboard, we can then go ahead and specify whatever images it would be, as well as for the gamepad. So I am going to go ahead and set this up. So first for the default accept key, which is going to be this, is going to be the enter. And then for gamepad, it's going to be the face button down or bottom, sorry. And then we're going to go ahead and get the enter key for the brush. So enter. And then for the brush for the gamepad, we are then also going to set the, which button was this? The down button, which is cross, I believe. There we go. We're gonna then name this to accept. We're gonna then change the row name to also accept. We also want one more action, which is going to be the back and display name is also going to be the back button. So by default, you always want a accept and a back button because we do need to set that up in order for common UI to know which is the button to hit, essentially enter on any buttons you have, as well as what button the controller should be using when it is hovering on top of a button. And then we will also have additional inputs that we'll be entering as well. So we have that set. We're going to go ahead and change this into the, I want to say back button. And then from here, we're going to then do back. And then we're going to do face right, which is the circle button. So like that, we have the two inputs set already. I'm going to go ahead and set up the others. We're going to do a total of seven. And then afterwards, I'll just showcase all seven. All right, and I've set up a total of seven inputs. What I set up was a tab left, a tab right. So this is going to be used for a tab list that we are going to be creating later. And then we also have three other inputs that are called open, print, and close. Open is going to end up opening up a pop-up, so pretty self-explanatory. Print is actually going to cause a animation to occur. So it's going to basically open up a printed text. 
and then the close is actually going to close that pop-up. Uh, so you can also see the keys I'm using, uh, which are like button left, button top, the right trigger, and then we have the right shoulder and the left shoulder. So those are the keys that we have set up. Gonna go ahead and hit save here. Now let's go over into our content drawer under input data. And from here, we now want to set our default input data. So this is gonna be our click action and our back action. This specifies to the game what our default input actions will be. We're gonna do accept. And then we're also going to do the back button like so. Perfect. So now we have set up our input actions. And then now we want to go into setting up our widgets. So let's go ahead and create our base widget. So when we go into user interface widget, you'll notice that the settings that we changed earlier are affecting this. So we see common user widget and we also see common activatable widget. We're gonna go ahead and use activatable widget for our base. And then we're also going to use a canvas because this is gonna be our default. And we're just gonna name that UI main. And we're gonna open that up and we'll notice that canvas is already added here. Perfect. So that is gonna be our base widget. Let's go into our blueprints. We're gonna to go to our demo player and we're now going to add this here. This is just gonna tell us that now we can set up our image or our UI to populate at the beginning of the level. So if I was to then add a random image in here and we hit play, we then see our image. So everything is linked up perfectly. All right. So now let's go into making the widgets that should go in here. Select on button. And there are two buttons that we're gonna to need to create. We're going to need a common bound action button. This widget is gonna be for displaying the input action name as well as the input action icon. So we're gonna create that first because it is much simpler to make. We're gonna just type in common bound action button. And then you'll also notice that we're seeing our common user widget and common activatable widget here. Those are the settings that I showed you earlier. We're gonna be using those for the rest of the widgets, but not for the buttons. But since everything starts with buttons, we're starting with those first. So we're gonna hit select. And then we're also going to select what widget to start off with, which is gonna be an overlay. And we're gonna name this action base. And for the common bound action button. It's actually really simple on how to set up. If you actually hit compile, it tells you exactly what widgets you need and what to name them. So we're gonna do exactly as it says. We need a common action widget. We're gonna plug that in here. And then we're also going to get a common text. And we'll drag that in. Now let's highlight both. And let's go ahead and wrap this with a horizontal box. And then for both of these, let's move the action widget on top. We're gonna to hit this fill button here. And for the text, we're actually going to center it and hit fill. And then let's do exactly what it's saying here. We need to rename these to match exactly as specified. So our text needs to be named text action net. Our widget needs to be input action widget and hit compile. And like that, our error has gone away. Now let's go ahead and fix the justification for this text and hit it into the center. That's so that our text just stays in the center. What I also want to do is I want to add a spacer on the left of this. And I'm gonna make the spacer 100. I mean, I guess I could do 100 by 100. And what that'll do is that when this input action widget has an image, the images are 100 by 100, and it will make my text stay in the center. So if I hit like the one key, we'll see that I have the one showing available, and my text stays directly into the center of the widget, which is exactly what I wanted. All right, so now let's go ahead and go into our action base and we're going to set a width of 
let's just say 500 by 100 and hit compile. And one last thing, let's set our style to the style that I showed you earlier. And that is all we need to do for this action button. Now let's go ahead and create our other button. This is gonna be the button we're gonna be using for our tab list as well as just the general UI as well. So we're gonna go into user interface, widget, and then we're gonna type in button. And we want the button base. We're gonna also do overlay. We're gonna do UI, button, base. Open this up. We're actually going to copy exactly this to save ourselves some time. And then we're also going to specify that as well. So we put the style and this makes it a lot easier. So now that we have that, this will actually have a graph where we want to do things. Right now, we want to be able to set the text because we're not gonna have the text automatically change like the action button. We need to do this ourselves. So we're gonna hit is a variable. Uh, let's actually name this to just text block. We're gonna go ahead, drag text block out here. We're gonna do a set text. And now let's create a custom event called set button text. Now this is very typical for UI buttons. You wanna be able to set the text whenever to kind of make your life easier. So I'm gonna drag and drop that in here. And upon pre-construct, I actually want to just call this function so that we can set the text once the button is created. And we're gonna promote this to a variable and rename it to just text and make that exposed on spawn instance editable. So now, whenever we create this button, we'll be able to set the text, and then we'll also have the functionality of changing the text if we ever wanted to, which we will actually be using that later. Next, I actually want to do a few things. For the event on click, I want to get the current text. We're going to then do a print statement plug that in here, disconnect. And all I want to do is a pen and we're gonna do a clicked on and plug that in. And essentially all this is going to do is that I'm going to print the text whenever this button is selected so that when I am demonstrating to you or I'm also demonstrating to myself, I'll be able to see the text that is being printed and it will just come in handy to know exactly which button is being pressed. All right, so now that that is set, let's actually go into our main widget, which is over here. And we are going to want to set a few things here. We are going to grab a, let's do a vertical box. We're going to anchor this to the left, position this to about 100. So I have some predetermined things that I have already used uh, that I've done about 12, 12, 14 times already while recording all of this. Uh, so I do know exactly where I wanna put everything. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of angling things exactly here. So we're gonna go ahead and do a 0 0.5 and we're gonna move this down. And we're gonna do a five, 500 by 500 box. We're gonna name this to vertical box button list. And I'm gonna showcase a bunch of different inputs that we have already created so that you can see them available here. We're gonna go ahead and grab our button base. And we're gonna copy, copy, copy. This one is going to be our accept button. So we're gonna have button accept. This is going to be button back. This one will be button tab left. 
and this will be button tab right. And all these are going to be doing is showcasing the input actions. You'll be able to see the icon, and then we're also going to be able to click them. And I just want to showcase to you uh, how easy it is to do that. So we're going to go ahead and just edit, edit all of the text so that it becomes visible. Go ahead and grab this action, copy and paste. We're also going to highlight all of these. We're going to hit fill. And then we're also going to give a padding of maybe 20. I think 20 is what I was using before. Great. So next, let's move the anchor to the center and then have it just fill this box completely. We just want to make sure it stays in the same place the entire time. Next, scroll down to where you see triggering input action. From here, we want to then set which respective action is it, it's going to be. So this is going to be the data table, and we'll hit Accept. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that by holding Shift and doing the um, right mouse key or left mouse key, whatever, um, if you're left or right-handed, pasting over here. Actually, let's hi highlight all of them and then paste here. Now let's go to the back and move these accordingly, like so. Highlight all of them and now hit display in action bar. This is not being used yet, but it will be important to do later. So just make sure to hit that as of right now. Now let's go back into our UI main and hit auto activate and then let's do back handler and also auto restore focus and then we're also going to change this to not hit testable essentially we want to make sure that when we add in the widget it's automatically on and it's already activated we don't have to worry about it which is fantastic then auto restore focus means when we add in another widget and then you remove it it will then just restore focus on this widget and then back handler means that it can receive the back input and we do want it to receive the back input so that we can actually see that it's working. And lastly, for interaction, we want to set this to any widget as a first widget so that the controller knows which one to go to. And we're going to do the button accept because that is the top left button and that is the very first widget that we want to focus. So now let's go ahead and test out all of these buttons. We're going to go ahead and hit play. So while using the mouse, we see all of the buttons available. Let me hit the back button. So I hit back. We're seeing that available. I'm hitting enter. We see accept. Hit one, hit two. I'm now switching to keyboard, or not keyboard, a <laughs> gamepad. I now hit the left tab, the right tab, and then back button. So left shoulder, right shoulder, and circle button. So everything is actually reacting accordingly. And even when I move down, the accept button is being consumed. Now, one thing I want to point out is that for the accept and the back button, if you have an input action set to a button, you cannot use it on other widgets. And what I mean by that is that if we go into here, and for these two, if we remove these input actions, as so, we hit play. We will see those available. And then when we actually hover on top, you'll now see that X is available. Since it is the default action button, it will automatically populate the X button. But if you have a button using accept, it's then not going to consume it. Now, if you want to disable that, you can go into your button base. And if we scroll down, you can choose to turn off should use fallback default input action. If you turn that off, it means it's not even going to use the select button as an input action. So you can turn that off if you want. You also have the option to hide input action with keyboard so that keyboard does not show up as well. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. So 
we do have those available. And if I actually hit the X button, what I'm doing right now, I can select buttons. So since they are the default ones, just keep in mind with that as well. So now that we have buttons set up, let's go ahead and start working on our tab list. Then let's also correct the button style. So underneath style, we're gonna then go into button base. And what we want to do is that actually for selected, we wanna change the tint and change it to the hovered color. And this is for our tab list because it technically counts as selected and not hovered. So, or not normal uh, selected. So we're gonna go ahead and hit play. And then we should show that when we are selected on the item and we hit the R1, we are navigating through as such. So we see that we are in fact hovered on top of them while also our control on top of the accept back and tab left are also available. So we're able to navigate that through while also showcasing that it works. So that is the tab list. So now let's go ahead and create our last widget. This is going to be the pop-up. So for the pop-up, we're going to then create a common activatable widget, which we have available here. And we're gonna go ahead and use an overlay. So we're gonna UI pop-up, pop-up example. For this, we're gonna then go ahead and now we are going to create a pop-up which is going to have two buttons. It's gonna have a print button and a close button. And the print is gonna have an animation playing and then the close is just gonna shut down the widget. So let's go ahead and do the base setup. I already have a design that I'm using as well as an animation that I'm gonna set up with you, but I already have predetermined settings that I'm gonna be using. So we're gonna go ahead and add in a blur. We're gonna fill this completely and then type in four. Oops, sorry, wrong place. Four here so that we make it blurry. And then this way, when we add the widget to our main uh, widget, we will then make everything blurry. So let's go into our UI main. We're gonna then create a common activatable widget stack, add it to the canvas panel, rename this to stack, and also align it to fill the entire page like so. And then we also wanna change the Z order to one. This will automatically put it in front of everything. So we just wanna make sure that we are blocking it all. And then let's go ahead and change the root content widget class to the pop-up example. So if we actually go into the pop-up example, hit compile, let's actually close these other ones and then hit compile. So, oh, looks like I accidentally changed that. We go back to one. And that should show it that it is blocking and that is exactly what we want to see when this is added in. So let's go back to our pop-up and then we're gonna now create the two buttons and the text that we want to show. We're gonna create a border. So it's gonna be a common border. Add it to the overlay, put it into the direct center. And then we're gonna also change this to the pop-up border style that I created and displayed earlier. And then from here, we want to then add in a vertical box. We're going to rename. Mm, nah, we don't have to rename anything. We could just leave it as vertical box. Uh, we're going to leave that to a zero padding. No, let's change that to five. And then we're going to create a two, two, two common text. So that's filling in nicely. And we're gonna use a predetermined phrase that I've already decided, which is gonna be enhanced input actions can be used in pop-ups. Gonna go ahead and delete the capitalization because that's a bit weird. Justification is gonna be into the center. And then we're also wanting to turn on auto wrap and change this to 500. 
I want the widget size to be 500 um, for the text. So that's why I'm setting it to that. And then from here, what we want to do next, let's see, let's also add a five padding to just give it a little bit more space in between everything because we're gonna add other widgets here. We're gonna add a, another border. So this can be a common border into the vertical box. This one is actually going to be our print, which is gonna be kind of this pinkish color. We're gonna copy this text, move it into here, and then we're gonna change this into print was selected. So essentially our print button is gonna have an animation that's gonna increase this and then decrease it. And we're gonna be going through how that works. Renaming this to print selected. And now for our two buttons. So within those two buttons, we want another horizontal box inside the vertical box. And I like to get rid of numbers because I hate seeing them there. And then now we just want our two buttons. We're gonna plug that in here and then copy paste. We're gonna go ahead and hit the fill and then something I actually missed is that on these buttons themselves, I didn't set a minimum. So I'm gonna do 300 to 100. Oh, I said 100, not 1,000. This is going to be our print button. So we're gonna do button print. And then this is going to be button close. We're gonna type in close. And then this one is just gonna type in print. So this is roughly what we want. We also are gonna need some padding. So we're gonna do a 10. And then from here, we want to select our input action for the print. So since we added in buttons, we need to set the input action. So we will have the print. And then we will also have the close. Highlight both and hit display in action bar. That's just to show them that they are available. And then before we get into the animation, I want to go into the pop-up example. I also wanna set auto activate. I want back handler so that the back handler is registered and then just auto restore focus. Actually, no, we don't need auto restore focus. And then we also want to, 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 to set desired focus widget to the print button so that it's the first button that it's available and we do want that available. I also want to do consume pointer input. The reason why we want to consume the input is because we don't want any button selected behind it. And then we also want to stop action because we don't want any of the action buttons to be uh, clicked on from behind. And then we're also going to set the overlay to just visible. Uh, that is just so that you can't click through as well. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and set up our animation. We're gonna hit here and we're gonna do print clicked on. We're gonna go ahead and grab our print selected. So this is the vertical box above the text itself. And then from here, we're gonna want a two second time frame. We're gonna get the transform here. And then we're also going to do visibility. So from the two, we want to show the text as not hit testable from the beginning. And then at the end, we can then just say, um, I guess not, not hit testable is fine for both. But for the transform, there's gonna be a few things we wanna do. So let's go ahead and, for the translation, we're gonna pin to the Y, fill that up completely. And then for the scale, we also want the Y. And I'll go into that in a second. 
delete, 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 and delete. So what I'm going to be doing is I want the print to start flat at the bottom, and then it's just going to expand up and then come back down. So for this, we are going to need to not only scale it, but we also have to make sure we are moving it uh, from the bottom because if we actually just did scale only, so if we hit a pin in the center as such, so let's go ahead and pin the Y. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to zero because it's going to start as flat. And then it's also going to end as flat. And you'll notice that it starts in the center expanding up. So that's why we kind of have to navigate it downwards. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the pin in the middle. And I have a predetermined amount that I've already set, which is going to be 37. That I've already like located and figured out in my last video. So from here, if we just hit play, we'll see it comes up and it comes down. And it looks quite seamless. Up and down. So that's a very simple animation we're going to set. So now let's go ahead and do the event graph. What we're going to do is that on print selected, we're going to play animation. And from here, we want the animation and just hit restore state. And that's about it. And what you could also do is that instead of what I did, where we had the um, we go to one second and then we go back, you could also do ping pong with the animation so that you will play it to the essentially halfway mark and then it just goes backwards. Uh, so you could have done that as well if you wanted to. Next is that for the close button, what I want to do is deactivate widget. And from here, we'll be able to just deactivate the widget. And then we will go back to our main widget from here. And now if we were to go back to our pop-up example, we see that this is being shown. And actually, this print was selected is not supposed to be there. Um, it's supposed to be hidden. So what we need to do is go into print selected and move this down to collapsed. And then we're just going to hit that eyeball because we don't want it shown as available. And only when it is being clicked on is shown. So now if we go back to here, we then see it's not available. And that's exactly what we want. All right. So now we got to be able to create the pop-up. So the thing for that is we need to have another button. So we're going to have our button. We're going to name this open. It's going to be a 500 by 500. One, 0 0.5. And then we're going to anchor it to the left in 0 and 0. Uh, sorry, negative 100, I think. There we go. And for this button, what we want is to go down here. And then on clicked, we want to push a widget. So we're going to grab that stack that we created in the center. And we're going to do push widget. And pop up example. All right. And from here, we can then hit play. It looks like our alignment was a little messed up, but if we hit open, we then have the pop-up and I can move my controller back and forth. I hit triangle and it opens up, but you also notice I'm hitting triangle and I'm not hovered on top of it. So it is working and the animation is playing. I hit close and I go back to over here. And now let's go ahead and just fix that alignment on that button, move this to the center, Move this over here as such. Perfect. 
And then that should fix the alignment. Oh, looks like it didn't. Let's go ahead and hit the save button on everything. I may have to restart the editor. So I just restarted and then it worked as shown here. So with that, we can hit X, it will open up, hit triangle and hit close. And let's also set a key to that open button. So we're gonna go over here, select on this. We're gonna rename this to button open. And we should see a different button shown here. Yep, we see the three button. I hit three, it opens. I can hit four and then five is closing. And then one and two cycles through all of these as well. Now for the last thing is the common action bar. This is where we're gonna use our action widget. So we're gonna go ahead, anchor this to the very bottom. We're gonna do the exact same thing, schedule this to set this to 10 and move everything zero, zero, zero. We're gonna do an alignment of five. We're gonna hit that fill button and then we're going to also set the action button to the action base. The action button can only be used within the bound action bar. It cannot be its own button. Uh, so just remember that. And what this will do is that the action bar will populate a button based upon how many widgets are currently using actions that are set to display an action. So whenever a button has display in action bar, it will then populate within this action bar at the bottom. Uh, so as of right now, I don't think we'll have many. Yeah, we should have a total of three buttons, I believe right now, or four actually, I think the back button counts. So we hit play. Oh, it looks like just three. So we have the tab left and tab right. And then we also have the open button. So if we actually hit this, it will open up that action input of the button. So even if you had a button that wasn't usable here, for example, if this was just an activatable widget and not a button, you could actually click this button and it would open that. So there is some good use on the action bar. I'm gonna do it, its own video on that, but it's just good to know. But that does showcase how you can use the data inputs and you can go through and click all of these buttons. We have an animation playing, we can close that and we can filter through all the tabs. So yeah, that's how you can use input action data. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, hit the subscribe, join the membership. You receive all of the, the videos early and yeah, all the self promo stuff. Thanks for your support.